Yeah, I'm just excited, but I just want to, I just feel like, I'm just feeling this right now that, that God has something huge for us um, as a church. And so I just want you to just play, and I'm just going to pray for us, that God will open up our hearts, God will open up our eyes, God will just open us up to receive something beautiful today. Uh, if you guys don't know me, my name is Dustin, and I'm the lead pastor here uh, at Victory Church on the Rock. But again, we're just going to spend just a couple moments just in prayer before we enter into oh, the opening of God's Word. Father, we just thank you. Uh, for what you're doing in our midst right now. God, we thank you that you're a God who's working, even if we don't see it, even if we don't feel it, even if things are going wrong, even if, God, I thank you that even if you're a God who's always moving. God, we thank you that you're a God who's always working. You're a God who reaches, and who chases after us. God, we thank you that you're, that you're a God who, who searches for us, who loves us, who died for us. God, we just sit here grateful. And God, I just pray that right now you open up our hearts, Open up our eyes to receive something new from you today. And God, we're just so grateful uh, for what you're doing uh, in our lives and in our church and in our city. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Man, I'm excited. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Man, I'm excited to be here today. Again, my name is Dustin, and I'm just so pumped to be here. July, it's less smoky than it's been. We can breathe properly outside. Like, it's, it's amazing. It's beautiful today. I'm excited to be here with you today. It's going to be just a beautiful Sunday. And if you're, if you're new, we're just excited again that you're joining us today for the first time. And, and uh, you know, if you've been with us, you know, we've been going through this series. We've been going through this series called I Am. What we've been doing is we've been going through the I am statements that Jesus makes in the book of John. So we've looked at Jesus saying, I am the bread of life and how he's the sustenance that our, that our spirit, that our soul needs. And last week we talked about how Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And when he said that I'm the light of the world, the, the beautiful thing is that darkness is just the absence of light. So when light enters, darkness trembles, darkness leaves. And today, we're going to continue this series together. And I don't know if you guys have pets. Does anyone have a pet? I have a little dog at home, and her name's Brady. And uh, she, she's crazy. She really is crazy. And, you know, when I was growing up, we actually had a bearded dragon. I don't know if any of you guys, like, that's the coolest name for a pet ever, right? What's your, what type of pet do you have? It's a dragon. Like, it's unbelievable. We have this bearded dragon. To be honest, I was terrified of it. I would barely touch it because it was like, sp we called him Spiky. Too. That was his name, Spiky, and he had these spikes on him. I was terrified of him because I was, I don't know, I just didn't really want to be around a dragon. You know, like I just didn't feel safe. And, and, and then uh, we also had like a dog later on. But at one point in time, we lived on this acreage and we had a goat. Okay, I don't know if anyone has been around goats before, but what happened was is that my old church, we did a fundraiser when I was in like elementary school, a fundraiser where they bought a goat. And what would happen is you would have to buy, uh, you would buy tickets for somebody else to get this goat. And then if you didn't want the goat, what you would do is you'd have to like buy like insurance so that way you didn't get the goat. But then there were certain people who were like, wow, I would love to eat that goat. And so it became this like whole thing. And so we lived on this acreage. And so this goat lived on our property. And I'm telling you, day one, we had this goat, day one. We put him in his pen and we go and we come back. He's gone. Like day one, I'm telling you, like, we, like, hey, take care of this goat for us. It's part of a fundraiser. We lose the goat day one, right? And so we're looking for him. We're looking for him. We can't find the goat. We can't find the goat. And we're driving, and we get to this hill, and, we're, and then I get out, and I'm looking around, and then all of a sudden this car stops. And they're like, hey, are you guys by chance looking for a goat? And we're like, yeah, we, we actually are looking for a goat. And so we got home. We reinforced his pen, and he escaped again a few days later, but we kept finding him and finding him and finding him. But the interesting thing about animals is, those of us know, if you have animals, animals are a lot of work, right? Like taking care of animals, like is a lot of work, especially when you get like puppies or like younger animals. They, they're just a lot of work to clean up after and they're expensive when you have to feed them. And it's just like a lot of work when it comes to taking care of animals, and, and, and it's interesting, in this next I am statement Jesus makes, he shares that he's in the business of taking care of animals. He, he, he's in the business of doing this. So if you have your Bible, you can turn with me. We're going to be in the book of John, chapter 10. And I'll be reading out of the English Standard Version. So if you have the Bible app on your phone, it's so easy just to pick the translation. But, but John, chapter 10, verse 11, this is what he says. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And so this 
so he says, I am the good shepherd. I am in the business of taking care of sheep. That's who I am. And it's this metaphor to who Jesus is. I am the good shepherd. But what does it exactly does it mean, right? What does it mean for us when he says, I am the good shepherd? What does that mean to you? Because in today's society, especially in Canada, I don't personally know any shepherds, right? Like I've never, actually, I don't think I've ever met a shepherd. But in the other parts of the world, and there are shepherds still, but what does this mean to be a good shepherd to us? And so this morning, I want to go through some characteristics of what it means when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And so if we go to John chapter 10, verse 1 to 2, we can see what we are being protected from, like what this actually means. John 10, verse 1 to 2 says this, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold, he who does not enter the pen by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters uh, by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And so here Jesus, when he's saying the, the, en- the, the thief and the robber tries to come in a different way. He, he's referring to the enemy. He's referring to Satan whose mission on earth is to steal your life, to kill you, and destroy everything about you. That's his mission on this world. To steal your dreams, your joy, and your happiness, and kill your aspirations, and kill your goals, and ulti- ultimately destroy every part of who you are. That's his mission here on earth. To destroy you. We can read it here, John 10, 10. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's his mission on earth. But right here, we also get Jesus' mission. But I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So we know our enemy's mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. But in the same verse, Jesus says, guess what? I'm going to tell you my mission. My mission is to give you life and give it abundantly. You know, another version uh, of this verse says this, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Right, the enemy's coming to destroy your life. Jesus is coming to give you life, to restore your life, to bring you new joy, to bring you new fullness in your life. That's who he is. Not to live some mediocre life, but to live the life we were supposed to live. To live the life where we're living in what God has called us to do, in our calling, in our gifting, in the future that God created for us. That's what Jesus is saying right here. I came that they may have life and have it to the full, to live in our calling, not outside it. That's the mission of the good shepherd. And so if Jesus is the shepherd, what does that make us? That makes us the sheep. That's so exciting to be the sheep. You you and I were, were sheep. Now, I was doing some research, like, I am not a sheep expert by any means. Like, I, I don't think I've ever, like, like, even, like, met a sheep in person. Like, I don't know if I ever have. Maybe have, like, I don't remember having a connection with a sheep ever in my life. So I was doing some research this week, like, what are sheep? Like, I don't know much about them. I know they're big, they're big fluffy things. Like, I don't know much about sheep. So I was doing some research, and, and one thing historically to realize is that sheep are really dumb. They are historically, and I read some articles, I'm telling you, there are so many articles trying to explain to you that sheep are not dumb. And they say the craziest things about sheep, like this is what they do, that means they're not dumb. It's like, they are though. Like they really are. You can't can't convince me that they're smart. And, And it's so interesting how similar sheep are to human beings, right? So now, now I'm gonna, I'm no sheep expert again, but I found a list of some things that, that sheep are and this is one this is so interesting sheep get jealous of each other it's like crazy we do that too number two sheep love cuddles that's the cutest thing i've read this whole week sheep love cuddling just like us sheep also remember people they recognize people's voice but sheep also carry emotional baggage now i'm telling you i don't know how they figured this stuff out right like like, this sheep carries emotional baggage. Like, I don't know if they send in, like, a psychologist to be like, okay, talk to this sheep and see what baggage they're carrying. I don't know how they figured this out, but they know this. Sheep also grieve for their loved ones when their loved ones are taken away. Or <laughs> Sheep love to sunbathe. Now, I don't know what they're trying to tan, right? Like, they can't tan their wool, I, I don't think. Like, maybe they can. Number, this one here is sheep love, our sheep self-medicate. Again, I don't know how they figure this stuff out, but they do. 
And then this one, sheep know when you're up to something, right? They know when you're trying to trick them. They know when you're doing something. But I look at this list, I'm like, man, that's literally the same way that I am, the same way that we are as human beings, that we carry emotional baggage, we grieve for loved ones, we love cuddles, and we get jealous of each other, and we self-medicate, and we know when each other are up to something. This is what sheep are. But there's also some characteristics of sheep I want to go through. Number one is that sheep get lost easily. Sheep get so lost so easily, and I'm telling you, this is so similar to me. I pretend, like, I'll, I pretend with Beth that I know where things are, right? Like, especially moving to a new city, she's like, all right, I'm going to meet you there. I'm like, perfect. We leave at the same time. I show up 15 minutes later. This happened, like, two weeks ago. She's like, how'd that happen? I was like, oh, I went the wrong way on the hen date. Uh, so I did, like, the full loop. Like, um, cool. She's like, no. Like, do you see the price of gas? Like, it's not, like... The best thing to do. I get lost super easy. Like, I'm not great at directions. I'm actually really, really bad at it. And I typically get lost or I go the wrong way or I take the long way to get places. But if you look at the story of the shepherd who leaves 99 sheep and goes after and chases the one, he's finding a sheep that got lost. Sheep get lost so easily. And we, as sheep, are the same way. We get lost easy. We're all looking for something in life. We're all pursuing something in life. And oftentimes we get distracted and so we go the wrong way. It's so easy for us to get lost. But if we're looking for something in this life, we need to find the shepherd to help us get there. Number two is this sheep are defenseless, right? Sheep, poor sheep, right? A wolf comes, a bear comes, a thief comes to steal them. There's nothing they can do. Like sheep can't fly. Right? Like, like, if sheep could fly, a wolf comes, they just fly away. But sheep can't fly, right? They, they can't, they don't have claws. They can't claw you away. Sheep don't really bite. And so the enemy comes, the, the wolf comes, they're like, oh boy. Right? You know, they, they, they're defenseless. There's nothing that the, we can do. And it, same for us. If we're not under the protection and love of Jesus, there's no way we can have defense against the enemy either. It's the same as the sheep, right? When the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, unless we're living in Jesus, we're not going to be able to defend ourselves. The only way we can defend ourselves is when Jesus enters the conversation. When Jesus enters that moment for us. And number three is sheep are dirty. Right? They get lost easily. They're defenseless. And sheep are dirty. They have so much wool on them, right, that they get lost. And they, they get so, so dirty. Now we have, again, we have this little dog. Her name is Brady. She weighs like eight pounds. And she's white. White hair. Right? So now imagine with me. She walks through the mud. That mud enters my house. Gets on my couch. Gets on my carpet. Gets on my clothes. She gets so dirty so easily. And it's, just, it's the same with these sheep. They, they just walk around. They have all this wool and they, get, they just walk around and they just get so, so dirty because they're laying in the sun. They're laying in the dirt. They just get so, so, so easy. And we're the same way. When we look at some of the decisions we make, when we look at some of the, the, the things that have happened to us in our life, when we look at ourselves, all we see is the things that are unclean, the things about us that we wish weren't there, the dirtiness about who we are. So here we have, for all of us, who we are, and I, which I hope this encourages you, is that we're lost, we're defenseless, and we're dirty. Be encouraged. That's who we are. This is what Jesus is saying. And without Jesus, we are lost. Without Jesus, we're defenseless, and without Jesus, we're dirty. But I have three things that the good shepherd does to help us with this. And number one is the good shepherd, he guides you know, the good shepherd is like a GPS for us. Because we get lost so easy. Again, we, we walk through the wrong doors. We make the wrong decisions. We pursue the wrong things. We pursue things that will benefit us rather than pursue things that will benefit other people. And so we just walk around like sheep, not knowing where we're going because we find something shiny and we try and pursue it. And Jesus is saying, hey, I will guide you. You see, this life, the abundant life, the, the life that's full, if that's what you want, I'm the answer. I will be what takes you there. I will guide you to where you need to go. That's what Jesus is saying. I will guide you when you get lost. 
No matter how far away you run, no matter what direction you go, I will still find you and I will always bring you back home. I will always bring you back to safety of the pen. I will always bring you back because I am Jesus and I guide you. That's who Jesus is. And David, in the Old Testament, right, he wrote a lot of the book of Psalm, which is this beautiful like poetry and songs. And Psalm 23 says this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Beautiful verse four. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. See, David was a shepherd. You know, he understood the role of a shepherd when it came to sheep. And he writes this and he's saying, God, you're the shepherd to me. Like even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though sometimes the decisions I make lead me to the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid. Why? Because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He's guiding you. He's guiding you even in the darkest moment, even in the hardest decision, even in the most heartbreaking thing, God is, Jesus is saying, I am there, I am guiding you. You don't have to be afraid. You might not even know where you're going, but I do. He's the GPS, right? We don't know where we're going in life, but Jesus is saying, hey, follow me and I will lead you to the places you want to go. I will lead you to the pasture. I will lead you into your future. Because if we put our hope in something else, if we, if we try and chase something else, it will destroy us. It will destroy you. If you go the wrong direction, if you pursue the wrong thing, it will eventually destroy you. Because eventually it'll fade away, and when it fades away, we're left with nothing. We're just left with our heartache and our heartbreak. And Jesus is saying, hey, I will guide you. I will be the one to lead you. Stop trying to do it on your own. Because when you do it on your own, we get led to the valley of the shadow of death. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to take you out of there if you let me guide you. If you let me. If we put our hope in the good shepherd, we will live a life and live it abundantly. I'm not talking about wealth, but talking about purpose. We're not talking about riches. We're talking about calling. That's the abundant life. The abundant life is not things, it's not stuff, it's purpose. Living a life filled with purpose. We wake up every day and we're excited about it because we know that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. We can feel it on the inside that we're living the life God has called us to live. That's the abundant life. That's the full life that Jesus is talking about. Here in John 10, verse 3, as we keep going through the story, it says this, To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice and he calls out his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Some of us were feeling so lost. We feel as if we don't know the voice of the shepherd. We feel as if we can't recognize his voice around all the other voices trying to speak. And I believe there's two possible reasons why we're not hearing his voice. Number one, is we don't actually know his voice. We've never actually heard his voice. So we don't know he's speaking because we don't actually recognize his voice. So we don't know that it's him talking. Number two would be that there's way too much noise around us. So either we don't recognize his voice or we know his voice, but we're not creating space to actually hear it. Right, because we get so busy. You know, work gets busy. Our kids' schedules gets busy. You know, you, at church, it gets busy. And so we're not actually creating time in our day, in our week, in our month, in our year to actually hear what he's saying. It's, it, we feel like Jesus, the shepherd, is guiding us, but we've set ourselves up in a construction zone where we can't hear anything. He might be giving you direction, He's speaking where you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to go, but we can't hear him because of where we've placed ourselves. In the busyness of life, that we haven't even created time to sit back, push out all the noise, and actually listen to his voice. 
I think for a lot of us, that's where we're at. We, we can't even remember the last time we felt God speaking. We, we, maybe we can't even remember the last time we opened up our Bible and we read for ourselves the amazing things God is doing. I think that's where a lot of us are at. And again, I, it's because we get busy, right? There's a lot going on. We're in Canada. We've just got so much happening that oftentimes we feel like reading the Bible or listening to Jesus is the last thing we should do. We don't have time. You know, my kids are important. My, my job, my business, important, of course. But I'm telling you, if you want to live that abundant life, we have to listen to what he's saying. We have to listen to his voice. I would encourage you this week, even today, just take a moment and just slow down. Take a break. It's okay to rest. God rested. We need to give ourselves permission to rest. Permission to slow down. Permission to be, to sit on our couch and listen. We get so busy we forget that it's okay for us to actually have time to rest, to be refilled, to listen to his voice. Because he will guide you. We need to spend time listening to it. And the beautiful thing is that Jesus knows your name. You now, Jesus doesn't just sit there saying, hey, you. He says, hey, Dustin, I know your name. I, I know your story. I know your past. I know your future. He's the one authoring the story. He's penning the words. And we need to listen hear him speak to spend time and find direction and slow down and actually listen to him as he speaks and number two is this is that he protects so number one he guides he's our guide he's our gps number two he protects he protects you from the power of the enemy you know remember the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy that's his entire mission on this planet is to steal your life to kill you to take away everything to take away your future to take away your calling to take away your gift and he will do whatever it takes to do that but jesus steps in and says hey that's my sheep i'm going to protect my sheep i'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that you're okay i'm going to do whatever it takes to fight the enemy with you God is fighting with you and God is fighting for you. He will leave the 99 sheep to pursue you, to find you, to protect you. To protect you from death. To bring you life. When Jesus went to the cross, that's what he did. He said, hey, you cannot take the sheep. And, that, and so he died and said, hey, I love you. I will protect you. Now look at my daughter. Right, my daughter, one years old. My daughter is defenseless. There's like literally nothing that she can do if something happens to her. But do you know what the power that she gets, the protection she gets when she knows I'm right there? When she knows if something happens that I'm going to be there? If somebody comes and tries to hurt her, I'm going to be there? When somebody comes and tries to take away her life, I'm going to be there? There's power when we know our Father's in the room. There's power when we know that our Father's there to protect us. And we need to realize that. You know, what we go through, I'm telling you, what we go through is so hard. And I don't know your story. I don't know what you've gone through. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're about to go through. I don't know. But I need you to realize that Jesus is saying, hey, jump into my arms and let's fight this battle together we don't have to go through life's hardest moments by ourselves. we don't have to go through life's hardest moments all by ourselves because jesus is saying i'm here to, i'm going to protect you no matter what situation you get yourself in no matter the decisions that you make i'm going to protect you because i love you and i will protect you a lot of us Fear runs our life and not courage. Fear runs our life. Every decision we make is based off of how scared we are. Scared we are of the future. Uncertain we are about where we're at. Fear runs our life. Fear of trials, fear of distress, fear of persecution, fear of whatever it might be. We need a good shepherd. We need Jesus to protect us. When we know the good shepherd is on our side, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid anymore. 
Because we know that Jesus, the good shepherd, is there and he's fighting for us and fighting with us. Romans 8, verse 35 to 37 says this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Verse 36. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. And then he says this. No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. When you look at your life, do you see yourself as a conqueror? Do you see yourself as one who will overcome? Or do you see yourself as a victim? Do you see yourself as the victim of your own story? Or do you see yourself as the conqueror of your own story? Do you see yourself as a victim to the enemy? Or do you see yourself as the, the destroyer of the enemy? He says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It's not us. Like, it's not anything we do, but we are more than conquerors of everything because of what he does in our life. He will protect you. He will fight for you. He will fight with you. The battles that are in front of you. We are more than conquerors in this life. We don't have to be afraid anymore. You don't have to be afraid of your past anymore. You don't have to be afraid of the trauma anymore. You don't have to because why? Because Jesus protects you. Jesus is there and he's saying, let's fight together. Let's fight for a better future together. But that being said, we still have the tendency to run away. We have the tendency to know, hey, I'm more than a conqueror. But when hard things come, when life gets really, really hard, it's so easy for us to run away, to self-medicate, to do things that we know we're not supposed to do because we feel like that's all we can do. We try and cope rather than conquer. If all we're doing is coping, you're never going to conquer. You're never going to be able to defeat the enemy. You're never going to be able to defeat your past because you're coping rather than conquering it. We're more than conquerors. We don't need to cope. He's saying we are more than conquerors because you love us. Let's be conquerors, not copers. In our society, we cope so much. We have a hard day, we go home. And we, we do something to try and cope with how hard our day was, how hard our week was, how people mistreated us. It's hard. And Jesus is like, you're a conqueror. Go tomorrow. Let's conquer together. More than conquerors. God is fighting for you. He loves you. And he will protect you under the shadow of his wings like the writer of Psalm 91 says. I'll protect you under the shadow of the Almighty. Allow God's love to protect you. We need to actually allow him to protect us. It's like going to battle and being like, hey, I know you're like bigger, stronger, better than me, but I'm going to do this one by myself. And then we lose and we're like, oops. I should have brought my dad with me. I should have brought my father with me. He, he would have won this battle. My dad's bigger than your dad, right? Like that kind of thing. We know that our father is bigger. Our father is better. Verse 10, or John 10 to 11 says this. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them and he flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. Some of us, we try and put our hope in the wrong thing or the wrong people. We try and put our hope in things and people other than Jesus rather than the good shepherd. And what happens is when we do this, when trials come, when the enemy is on the prowl, when he's coming to destroy you, those things tend to fade away. The people we thought would be there tend to not be there. The people we thought would be there in our hardest moment tend to not be around. And if our hope is in them rather than the shepherd, guess what? We are going to be taken away. We are going to be devoured. We are going to be scattered because our hope is in the wrong person. Our hope needs to be in Jesus because that will fade away. Relationships, wealth, everything fades away. And what we're left with is a broken heart because our hope was in the wrong thing. 
Jesus never fades away. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He will never change. The only thing that changes is us. Have you ever thought when things get hard and we feel like Jesus isn't there, do you ever think that maybe we're the one who left? We're the one who ran away? And we look and we're like, Jesus, where are you? Well, you've ran 10 miles down the road the wrong way. And Jesus is like saying, you know what? Even if you run away, I will pursue you. I will chase after you. I will protect you. I will bring you back home. Put our, your hope in him and see his protecting power around you. you know, number one, he guides. He protects this one. I love. He cleans. Not only does he guide us and protect us, he also cleans us. How does he clean you? This is it, John 10, 14, verse 10, 18. I am the good shepherd for my, my own know me and I know them. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep and I have other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also. He's a gatherer. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I've received from my Father. You know, Jesus, how does he clean you? He died for you. How does he bring you healing? How does he bring you restoration? He says, I'm going to die instead of you. Not only does he die for you, he dies instead of you. The death that we were supposed to get because of who we are and the decisions we make and the, the mistakes we made and the sin in our life, that death we were supposed to receive, Jesus said, I'm going to do it instead. I'm going to do it instead. You sit back and watch what I'm about to do. He cleans us. He conquered death so we could be free conquered it like when we look at things to conquer death is a hard thing to conquer but Jesus did it he conquered it and he didn't do it for himself he did it for you and I was doing some research on wool this week too right again I don't know a lot about sheep but the value of sheep comes from its wool that's where the value of sheep comes from is its wool because you can sell the wool for clothing or whatever it is now if a sheep wool is dirty it's not as valuable if a sheep wool is dirty I don't want to wear dirty clothing or have dirty wool it's not worth as much money so what happens is people come and they clean the wool before they try and sell it now when Jesus comes in and he cleans you He looks at you and he says, you're valuable, but I'm going to make you more valuable. I'm going to take you from death to life. I'm going to make you a new creation. I'm going to take the old you and make you a new you. I'm going to take the most broken part of your heart, the most broken part of your soul. I'm going to put it back together and we're going to sit here together celebrating what I did. I'm going to make you a new creation. And the beauty is he will clean you over and 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 over he will continuously do that there's this moment before Jesus goes to his death on the cross and he's he's eating a meal with his disciples his best friends and their feet are dirty they've been walking all day in their sandals it's muddy they're disgusting and Jesus puts a towel on his waist and goes and cleans his disciples dirty stinky disgusting feet we don't think the Savior should do that. We don't think the Savior should be the one to come and clean us. But he does. He'll take the most dirty, disgusting part of your soul, of your past, the trauma, the pain, and he'll say, I'm going to clean you. You were meant to live for so much more than this. You were meant to live for something more beautiful, so much bigger than how you're living. You weren't supposed to be living dirty like this. He'll clean us of the baggage we've been carrying around our whole lives. He'll clean us of the addiction that keeps haunting us year after year. 
He'll clean us of how we treated people in the past, how we treated our kids, how we treated our parents. He'll clean you of the fear that's leading your life. He will clean you of the sin that's pestering you. He will clean me of the trauma from my past. He will clean me. He will clean you. Again, he didn't just die for you. He died instead of you. He cleaned you. He, and we need to find our value in that, not in anything else. Our value in saying, Jesus, thank you for what you've done in my life. Thank you for healing me, for restoring me, for cleaning me, taking care of me. Once we come into relationship with Jesus, we receive his love, we receive his holiness and his righteousness. You know, Jesus is such a good shepherd. He cares so deeply about you, even if you run away, even if you get lost, even if you roll around in the mud, even if you find yourself, you've led yourself into the presence of something that's going to destroy you. He's such a good shepherd, he finds you there and he'll bring you back home. We need to follow the good shepherd. Even if we run away, he still pursues you. Even if you give up, he pursues you. Even if you're on the brink of burnout, even if you're on the brink of disaster, he pursues you and he brings restoration to your soul. Even if you fall into temptation, he pursues you. Jesus pursues the most broken of hearts. He pursues you. And I don't know where you're at. I don't know, again, I don't know your story, but I was really feeling as I was prepping and praying. This is, a, we, a lot of us, we feel this way. Lost. We feel afraid. We feel dirty. We feel unclean. But our takeaway that we've been doing for this series says this, you may feel lost, you may feel defenseless and dirty, but the good shepherd came to guide you, to protect you, and to clean you. You might feel lost. You might feel defenseless. You might feel broken. You might feel scared. You might feel dirty. You might feel broken. But Jesus came to guide you. He came to protect you, and he came to clean you. That's what Jesus is in the business of doing. He wants to lead you to green pastures. He wants to move you from the lies of the enemy into a relationship with him to have a full life. Spend time reading his words this week. Spend time hearing his voice. Practice hearing his voice. Take time to sit back and just listen. He's lo he loves you and he's chasing after you. He will leave the 99 and pursue you. He will pursue you. Now we're going to sing a song and then I'm going to come back up at the end. But this song is called Reckless Love. Maybe you've heard it before. And as and in this song, it, it says, Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. The love that seems reckless right it, it seems weird that jesus would leave 99 clean healthy protected sheep to find you doesn't make sense but that's the love that jesus has for us so we're going to sing this song together and then i'm going to come back up so i just want to encourage everyone to stand right now in this moment and as we sing i just want to encourage you let this song the words wash over you that if you feel lost, if you feel unprotected, if you feel defenseless, if you feel it, just know Jesus is pursuing you right now in this moment. So let's sing this song together.